there's only one genre which never goes out of style and it's something new you know and if you've got a fresh voice or a fresh point of view or a fresh take or you know something nuanced like uh, Lydia was saying or you know you take the horror genre and you marry it to kind of social and political commentary like uh, Get Out it did this year you know and they kind of pushed that conversation of you know where that genre was happening um, I'd also say you know, uh, uh, maybe a little bit Quixote-like. Uh, I started in theatrical exhibition. I got into the business because I opened a movie theater uh, at the end of the 70s uh, in Chicago. Um, and I have kind of come full circle. I'm curating a film series at a theater at an art center in New Jersey. Um, and I think that people are starving for community in this country. I think mm. they're starving for public space where they can meet and they can dialogue. And, you know, film kind of had that space in a primary way for my generation. Uh, there's just a hyperabundance of content now and a hyperabundance of uh, images. And, uh, you know, there's just so much. Every song that's ever been recorded in history is on your phone and available to you. Every movie ever made, you can, you know, access and watch online. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of atomized us, I think, and, uh, you know, separated us in some way. And every screening we've had there has been sold out, you know, and we've tried to eventize the presentation of the film, uh, you know, kind of move it out of this kind of depressing you know, mall space that it's been in for things. Gary was telling about going to Pasadena or Glendale. Yeah, Glendale. You know, and every restaurant in this whole place was packed to the gills and lines waiting, and then there was the Lowe's Cinema or the Pacific, Thick, you know, it looked like some kind of tacky graveyard, you know? Mm. Uh, and I, I think that there is a, a way in which the experience of watching film collectively and experiencing laughter together and experiencing uh, you know, this human emotion together uh, is something that's kind of sadly, you know, missing. And, uh, uh, you know, whether it ever, you know, moves from what now is this kind of hyper-muscled-up cinema of spectacle, you know, that's what kind of dominates, you know, mainstream entertainment and all of the, the malls and the culture. And, uh, you know, there's no middle class anymore in film as there's no middle class in the country, you know, it's it's no surprise. Uh, uh, you can make films for a half a million or, you know, one or two million dollars, or you can make them for a hundred million dollars. The $150 million films being made by first-time directors, <laughs> you know, is kind of a mind, can you imagine that when, yeah. when we were at the studio? Yeah. Um, but I, I do believe, like, you know, Lydia in, uh, you know, the power of independent voices and independent film on screens. And, you know, that's what I still try to do. And it, and it can this year, it can this year, it was interesting because in the, they had a whole VR sidebar, right? And they had one space that was a VR theater where about 20, 25 people could go in and watch the same thing on VR, but in your seat with your own VR headset. <laughs> but they did it all together at the same time so that when it was over, they could take their headsets off and talk about it. And share it. Yeah. So it was the, so that sort of collective experience was was still a part of the enhancement of the basic experience, <laughs> which I thought was interesting.